Welcome to DrupalCon. I hope today your day was good. You're having a nice day? Yeah? yeah. Had too much lunch? <laughs> OK. So uh, the talk is all about uh, dependency injection in Drupal 8. Uh, I'm Ashwini Kumar. So uh, I'm from India. I work with Srijan Technology as a technical architect. Uh, in terms of Drupal, I'm with Drupal from last five to six years. Started my journey from Drupal 6, Drupal 7, and now Drupal 8. In terms of contribution, I've started my journey in contribution by organizing certain small Drupal camps, uh, Drupal uh, code sprints, hackathons, and helping new beginners uh, to getting involved in the community. Now I'm more uh, into the initiative back in India for uh, starting Drupal into uh, colleges, schools, which we have in their courses. Uh, also helping new beginners uh, from, who are coming out from the college uh, getting jobs in Drupal. Apart from that, uh, recent my contribution lies in Drupal console, uh, in translating Drupal console and some of the core commands translating Drupal console in Hindi specifically. Uh, so we have translated uh, Drupal console in Hindi uh, about 97 point something percentage as of now. And I think that's the highest translatable language we have as of now. Uh, and yeah. And we did that before last DrupalCon uh, Mumbai. So that was kind of achievement for us. Have you guys tried out Drupal console? Uh, do you like it? Yeah, OK. And yeah, I also uh, a kind of a pilot train, training. I'm taking a training of a, a helicopter. So yeah, that's, that's what the picture. So let's, uh, the agenda of the session. First, we're going to discover what's the mystery about DI. So the story of the session goes like, first, we're going to understand the conceptually what exactly dependency injection mean, and how, why we should learn dependency injection in first place. And uh, then we're gonna see uh, some DI concepts in Symfony and what is there in DI in Drupal 8. There'll be a couple of examples and uh, architecture kind of a diagrams where we can easily understand the concept and how actually we can plug DI into Drupal 8 custom or contributed module development. So that's what the agenda will be all about of the session. So there's this uh, uh, joke which I heard, uh, why to give my two cents to learn DI. So the joke is dependency injection is a concept of $25 where you have to put your two cents to learn. <laughs> so before uh, uh, going with the dependency injection, I would like to uh, share one of my uh, real experience, how I uh, come to know and get involved using DI in my contributed modules porting. So uh, a year back, I worked with one of my uh, contributed module porting, and I did, I used the Drupal upgrade module, and it actually gave me what function uh, is deprecated and what things you have to change. And there are certain dredge command which actually change your Drupal 7 module directory structure with the standard of Drupal 8. So I did that, uh, uh, the module was done, I shifted a couple of business logic code into certain files as per the Drupal 8 uh, module uh, development standard. And I thought, let's get review from my mentor. So I, I, I checked out my mentor and he said, what do you have done? So I was like, I, I contributed the module and I put it successfully, the module is running, you can install it. But he said, but we have done, what you have done, you have just shifted a couple of code, what is already wrote in Drupal 7, and you have just followed the directory structure. But you haven't used any of the power of Drupal 8. And we have seen that uh, Drupal 8 is, we, we are hearing many things about Drupal 8, like Drupal 8 have 200 features, but the quick question which come into my mind, can we learn 200 features quick? If a person coming from D7 to D8, what will the learning curve? Or if a person coming directly to Drupal 8, what will the learning curve? How the 200 features can be used in module or site development or theming or 
maybe a command line tool like Drupal console, how you can use that. At that time, he introduced me uh, to the concept of dependency injection, which I'm till now super happy because it actually uh, helped me and made my life easier in terms of uh, coding and in terms of creating modules or porting modules in Drupal 8. So well, uh, as it says, the literal meaning is, uh, so uh, before, before just a step back, I'm assuming that all over here, the uh, uh, attendee are familiar with the OOPS concepts, right? Okay. Uh, and how many of you uh, worked with Drupal, or how many of you uh, with Symfony? Drupal? <laughs> oh, thank you. Symfony? Okay, great. So yeah, let's go ahead. So dependency injection, what exactly it means? It's basically a concept where you define your dependency in a class definition rather than instantiating them into class itself. So as the, as the uh, uh, statement says, the little man injecting dependency into a class, that what we understand about dependency injection as a word. But what exactly that mean? So let's go to a ground zero and let's first understand what it means by dependency. So let's say you have a class that uses another object and performing some functions and uh, doing something with your business logic. So we can say that your class have dependency of certain object. So for example, if you have a model class that fetches something from the database, maybe a database query and uh, or uh, performing some, uh, maybe a select query or an update query or SQL query, anything. So we can say that your model class have dependency of database object and that's what dependency is. So now let's understand the uh, meaning of what it means injecting dependencies. So injecting dependencies is like pushing dependency into a class from out of the box. What it means that when you are declaring your dependencies into a class, instead of using a new operator, you can pass your dependency into a constructor as a parameter, and that's it. That's all means the dependency injection. You really do not need any of the concept of service container, DIC, or pimple, of course, they can make our life easier, but technically you don't need that. So there are certain forms of dependency injection, uh, constructor, setter, property. These are the mostly or uh, widely used in different, different frameworks uh, based on Symfony, I guess, uh, or PHP. Uh, so first, let's take a look to constructor injection, what exactly it is. So constructor injection is mostly usable uh, injection in frameworks in Drupal 8 as well. So, uh, okay, uh, let me just, all right, okay. So in constructor injection, we pass our uh, dependency into a parameter of a constructor of a class, and it actually, uh, the dependency get present uh, till the time your constructor uh, lifetime, or basically your class lifetime. So it will always be, uh, the dependency will always be available throughout your class. The disadvantage of this injection is, so let's take an example. Um, you have a class uh, which have a requirement of certain dependency, and you have to use that. Without dependency, your class will not work. At that time, constructor injection works very well. So in this example, as the newsletter manager, it's a class, and now I have to send a mail about my newsletter. So my class cannot work with the dependency, right? So that's what the constructor injection is. And you have to just pass it as a parameter to your constructor. Set injection. Set injection is most likely a scenario where you have optional dependency uh, cases. So you might need a dependency into your class or you may need, right? So you can actually set your dependency by using a setter method and pass it into the parameter uh, 
whatever dependency you have. And you can actually declare all these setter method, uh, set method uh, in many times in your class. So for example, you have the first dependency, mailer. So you can declare set mailer and here's my dependency. Likewise, you can specify many setter method into your class. The disadvantage of this injection is you will not be able to uh, handle where your dependency actually lost control into your class. So you have, let's say, a four or five dependency you have set in your class, but let's say if the lines of the code are huge, like thousands, so you will not be able to figure it out what dependency is available right now. Property injection, property injection is kind of a similar to setter injection. You can uh, use the setter function and uh, same way uh, you can call the dependency into your class. And using the public uh, 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 keyword, you can actually uh, specify the fields in your class. The problem with this uh, injection is you will not, again, the same problem which we have with the setter, you will not able to control the dependencies uh, lifetime uh, into your class. So quick question which actually comes into my mind when I'm just going back into the scenario which I uh, introduced you. When my mentor told me that uh, you should use DI into your code, so I was like, why DI? Because my code works without DI as well. Why I have to forcefully use CI? So uh, a quick answer was that you really do not have to use dependency injection every, and, uh, every time whenever you are contributed or uh, in a custom module. It basically depends if you have lots of dependency in your uh, uh, contrib or custom module or specifically in your class. At that time, you should use DI, but you should not always use DI principle uh, whenever you are developing a Drupal 8 module. But why DI? What exactly it gives me power? So let's take an uh, example. So you, let's say we have a robot which uh, builds a house and it started with building some piles of uh, uh, a house and when it comes to a doorway, we had two options. Either construct a door from starting, taking a raw materials and building the door and then put it in a doorway or we can just get it from some supplier at the rediment tool and we will just fix it in a doorway. So what do you guys think? What will the efficient way? Or quick way? Supplying? Supplying, right. That's what I think, actually, and that's what the concept is all about. So you actually take a, a supplying a door and put it in your door. That's what in dependency injection is. So what it comes to, it comes to a dependency inversion principle. Where your class, so specifically in PHP it works with interface. So where your class have lots of dependency, so you actually inject them with the interface and your class actually calls the interface to get all the dependencies so that you can use a lot of functions which is available into uh, your dependency class. So let's take another example by understanding into a code point of view, what exactly we will get if we use dependency injection and if we do not use it. So first let's take an example without dependency injection. So let's say we have a two class, a Google Maps and OpenStreetMap. And in our class, we actually want to use uh, the, these classes functions or uh, Let's say we create, we're creating a store service and we have to get the address by using a Google map uh, uh, class or service. So traditionally, this is how we're gonna write. We're gonna use a new operator called the Google class and then we're gonna use uh, the variable and get coordinates from address and we're gonna pass something, a store address to it. And maybe we get a geo coordinate or anything we would like to get. But with dependency injection, what do you guys think, what's changed? So here we are actually passing our dependency into a constructor parameter. You see geolocation service and we are just passing that into a constructor 
And anywhere in class, I'll just call that interface or dependency function anywhere in my class. I can use that. But what is geolocation service? So we create an interface, and we have function inside that. And both the class, Google Maps and uh, OpenStreetMap, implements the geolocation service interface. So our code is cleaner. Our code uh, is decoupled. So our class is decoupled from the dependency. So in this case, if I want to change my dependency or function, I want to rewrite this code. But over here, I do not have to do anything. I'll just change the uh, dependency what I'm passing. So what we also get from this, that our code is much more cleaner and modular. Reusable, yes, the less your function knows, the more usable it is. So that's what the uh, 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 outcome which we get from TI. And it's flexible, yes, uh, your class is decoupled from your uh, dependency, and you can anytime change the dependency where you have mapped with that. It's easy to test, and the abstraction is decoupled. So uh, while working with DI, you often face these jargons, uh, dependency injector, DIC, inversion of control, service container, basically these are all same. It's just the uh, certain uh, names which we use in different, different uh, frameworks. More specifically in Drupal 8, you will face the service container <laughs> that what it is and how we can use service container in uh, DI. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. Oh, here it is. Okay. So service container basically deals by deals with the uh, mapping of your dependency at one place, and you can call that service container into your class. So next time, if I want to change any dependency of my class, or let's say if I have a three dependency, and next time I don't want to use a two dependency, or I want to add any other dependency, so I'll just add it into my service container. Over here, I don't want you to think about, just forget about the services module or web services. It's not that. So it's just a mapping of uh, your dependency, which uh, your module based on. We're going to see where and how it actually uh, happened in Drupal 8. Before that, let's uh, uh, first take a look to Symfony's dependency injection component. So uh, there, there are a lot of concepts in uh, Symfony DI. Um, there are event dispatcher, there are compilers, which actually works behind that when you are using uh, DI. But I'm not going to take you uh, in that deep. Instead, I'm going to show you the overall concept and how we can actually use it when we will contribute to Drupal. So in Symfony DI, uh, by calling any service, they use the string uh, 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 stuff. And you can actually just call your dependency uh, with a code and let's say some service. Second, uh, the same thing which uh, I mentioned that it actually allows you to inject your dependency into class definition instead of declaring them into the class itself. The default scope is container, and it can be configured in PHP or XML or YML, and it can be compiled down to uh, PHP as well. So you can actually write all the uh, service container stuff in PHP as well. Uh, and yes, you can actually define uh, your service container, uh, the mapping, into YML or XML or PHP. So in Drupal 8, most of the stuff, the YML has been introduced, so all the service container uh, the mapping has been uh, lies with the YML. So now let's uh, take a look to uh, dependency injection in Drupal 8. So uh, while working with Drupal 8 uh, services, you probably be using uh, these uh, services, uh, the database and module handler and requests. So when I'm saying services, you can also compare uh, 
the hooks which we used to have in Drupal 8 and the core services which is introduced in, uh, sorry, the hooks which we used to have in Drupal 7 and the services which we have in Drupal 8. So hooks are deprecated in Drupal 8, right? And now we use services to actually alter them or reuse them what we have in core. So two ways uh, we can actually use core services. One is uh, the procedure code way you can actually define Drupal and service and just pass out some uh, service which we need or write uh, object-oriented code which we have just seen by uh, using the DI principle or uh, injecting them by a service container. But in Drupal 8, uh, we really do not come to know where and exactly it happens in core. So there is uh, a Drupal kernel file which actually deals with the auto-loading and auto-rewriting of uh, services. So when you define your services in a service container, so it makes sure that these things actually available to the class where you have called your, uh, uh, where you have injecting your dependency. And all the core services are defined in code.services.yml. You can see the YML structure which they have been used and same structure we have to use in our module. If you, are, uh, if you have any compiler passes which needs to be uh, uh, used in DI, then those are actually uh, dealt with by uh, core bundle.php, which lies in core slash lib slash Drupal code. And there's the dependency injection component, which is a symphony component uh, uh, in Drupal 8. So all the things related to D dependency injection lies in Drupal core uh, dependency injection slash compiler. So yeah, uh, so this situation we get it, how do I use it in my module? So I'm creating my custom module or I'm porting my uh, contributed module. Actually many of the contributed module you will not see the concept of DI has been used. Actually in search module we do have I've seen that now people are actually plugging all these uh, features of uh, Drupal 8 into their contributed modules, but it was not there when the contributed mod module porting initially start started. So uh, let's say we are building uh, our own module, my module, I would say, and we have to define our module dot services dot YML, and we will define all these service into this file and we're gonna see how we can define that. The next thing, if where my class lies will be, it will be in module slash lib slash Drupal slash my module slash my module bundle dot PHP. And that's where all the classes will lies. And it will, all the injection will happen in my class from there. So now let's uh, take a look to uh, the star.services.yml, what we have uh, uh, in this file, what magic do we have? Because uh, whatever we defined here, any dependency, it will get auto-loaded and it will be uh, available to our module. So let me just... I know it got stuck. Uh, anywhere here, can you help me out? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, 
why this happened. The presentation is stuck. Huh. Okay. We're not going to go back. We're not going to go ahead. <laughs> okay, let me just. Sorry? Oh, oh. it worked? Okay. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> finally. Yeah, we were here. Hmm. So there's this file. Are you able to see? No? At the back? No? Yeah. How do I increase these streams? Kill the lights. Command plus 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 plus. Thanks, thanks. Now? Great. <laughs> so there's this file uh, which you can find out uh, in core, core.services.yml. So you will find hell lot of things in this file which you will not able to understand if you are not familiar with it. So uh, I'm going to directly take you to service uh, definition example. I would say a part alias. Yeah, here it is. So this is how we actually define our services in our services.yml. So we path is a module, and we define uh, what services we need, what class that services uh, should get. So in that case, over here, um, ally, ally is whitelist. And tag is more like if my dependent class is also have certain dependency. And uh, argument you can pass as many as dependency you want uh, uh, in your definition. So in this case, we have path, alias, whitelist, cache, default, log, state, and all those things. So this is how you're going to define uh, when you create your module.services.yml. And you have a lot of examples. Just same stuff, you have to just maybe a copy paste from here or change whatever service you want. Should I click play? <coughs> okay. Now let's take an example. Uh, if you are creating a form in Drupal 8, how are we going to actually use dependency injection in form? I have a sample code for us. Are you able to see it back? Thank you. So we have an example form. So this is a, a piece of code which I actually took it from uh, Drupal.org uh, website, uh, which actually states that how you can use uh, dependency injection in when you are building your custom form. So first we define all the namespaces, all the interfaces which we're going to use uh, into our class. So in that case, form base, form state interface are all required interfaces. Uh, there's the account interface and the dependency injector uh, container interface we have to define. And now we're going to extend the form base class. And in constructor, we have passed the account interface. But where does actually dependency injection is happening? It's here. So we are calling our current user uh, service into our form. And we're going to use as we would like. We're going to maybe uh, take our current user profile or UID or name, anything we can get from here. And that's it. That's how you're going to use it. You have to just use the function and you have to just pass your services as a string. <laughs> the challenge for, with the Drupal 8 is there are a lot of things in it, and how do I find which service I would need in my custom or contributed module? 
how do I actually uh, find where it actually lies and what all services has been uh, included in Drupal 8. So there's this website, uh, api.drupal.org. I actually forgot who built that. But it was a great initiative uh, that was taken when Drupal 8 was initially introduced. You can actually find anything over here, what APIs and what functions or file or where it actually lies, a class with tag, you can find out everything. It's just like uh, a form or any API we used to have in Drupal 7. So there's a certain form API, you will have a certain URL and you see all the functions which is there in form API. Just like that, you can actually search by name or content. Let me just try to open this. Okay, Wi-Fi works. Uh, Are you all using Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> Trying, Trying to, okay. Use only one device, please. <laughs> Come on, oh, okay. Okay, let's go here. Let me go and search for services. APIs. And we're gonna find out the classes. What was that? API Drupal Services. Oh, okay. API Drupal Services. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, here it is. Transferring it. Drupal con by fair. Uh, so uh, this is the place where you can actually search for services which you can uh, use in your module or which is actually there in Drupal code. Maybe, uh, let's see, let's search for module handle. Oh no, okay. But, but APS. It just slowed because of the Wi-Fi, I'm sure. Come, come, come. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so uh, this is a code which I actually believe and I always use this thing whenever I learn any, any new technology or any new part of a thing, you have to start somewhere, right? 
even if you are a symphony guy and now thinking of Drupal 8, you have to start somewhere, right? So start small and yeah, then work your way up. I don't know who, who is the person who quoted this, but I have read somewhere long back. Yeah, questions? Yes. You can actually use DI in plugins as well because plugins uh, also you, you write uh, your class in plugins, right? So if you are writing a class, you can actually use interface in that. Yeah, but like, say for example, the plugin extends a base plugin class, mm -hmm. and you can't touch the interface on that? Are you sure about this? Uh, I was working on something. Oh, okay. I'm not sure whether uh, the plugin class, uh, okay, let me just think about it. I think it can also implement the factory class, which is not a DI way, but factory class is also a service which is provided by Drupal 8. And yeah, that it is, yeah. With plugin, yes, that that's the way to do. Uh, what do you mean by reflections? No. Okay, but does that answer your question? Maybe you can also try to use factory classes in plugin. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. This one? Yeah, so like I don't see a variable that we're calling that's similar between them or... So uh, uh, probably we'll not find exact <laughs> what I have mentioned here, but the objective of showing that you can pass the, uh, the geolocation service as an interface and you can plug your well, independence actually, into it. Actually, the uh, other one maybe was actually in your PHP store, but you had like a... Um, uh, PHP store, container. this one? Oh, the form example, okay. Yeah. I don't understand how the container knows mm -hmm. to put that in with our form, I guess, in this case, because I don't see us calling the account or... Oh, it's actually uh, calling from here. Oh. Yeah. That's where you define and you just plug it over here so you as a parameter. You yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, so get is just a function which by using you can actually call the service uh, which you have defined in your interface. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for listening, and yes, please do evaluate this session uh, in New Orleans website, the event start, or maybe just a link where you can actually download the presentation uh, of DI. And I do have certain stickers and badge with me, so if you need, you can collect it from me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>